50 years ago today, humankind took their first steps off world when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin first set foot on the moon with Michael Collins orbiting overhead. Uh, if you've been following what we've been doing here at Home and Design, you'll remember a few months back, I was inspired by our Lego Saturn V over there, which is modeled after the vehicle that took those astronauts to the moon. And this little bit of it right here is the portion of that rocket accompanying the three astronauts on that journey. But it's not the only representation of the LEM that LEGO has created. I thought it would be fun to go ahead and put this kit together on the 50th anniversary of the moon landing. So let's get started. These micro scale bits from the Saturn V representing the limb here, I think are just ingenious. They're, they're so great, but it's not the only representation of the limb that Lego has created. In 1991, they did a set that I'd show you, but unfortunately it's dissolved into my Lego collection. I might have some of the minifigs from that set here. But in addition, they came out with set 565 in 1975, which we see here. The name of the set was Moon Landing, and it had just been three years since Apollo 17, the last Apollo mission, which is why it's got a moon buggy we've got partially constructed here, um, and just one year since Skylab and the end of the total Apollo program. Um, I like the fact that on this set, We've got all three astronauts, uh, even one that was up on the command service module and did not make the trip to the lunar surface, but LEGO didn't leave him out of this set. Uh, just like our microscale lander, we've got the windows, which are graphically implied here on the, in microscale. We see them here represented on this kit. It also has an ascent stage and the descent stage modeled separately for a great Play, play factor. Um, this was a, a fun little set. I've got a couple different uh, Lego space theme minifigs here. I've got my, my pumpkin suit, shuttle era, astronauts. I've got some Lego astronauts with their own kind of shuttle branding that's not an official NASA um, part. And then I've got a couple different official NASA figures, including this one that's curiously wearing a, a sleeping bag on a camping backpack. Um, but I love the gold foil um, helmet visor. He's got the great anodized aluminum hookups um, and the official NASA logo. That's cool. Um, two of those minifigs representing, of course, the, the pilot and the commander. Not unlike this set right here. Set 10266, NASA Apollo 11 Lunar Lander. As you can see, we've come a long way since 1975 with over 10,000 parts in the Lego vocabulary since the 70s um, and, and the crude bricks of the time. We can all now model these very realistic sets like this one here, celebrating uh, Apollo 50th as identified on the box. Um, I think if you ordered this in a certain time frame, uh, which I did, and or a certain dollar amount, which I did, you got this fun little commemorative patch. Um, it's got a great manual that shows a lot of the history of the mission. Um, as well as the regular fantastic LEGO detailed instructions. I thought it would be fun to go ahead and put this kit together on the 50th anniversary of the moon landing. So let's get started. I've got my LEGO trays here. I built these trays. They're the perfect laptop accessory for like building on the couch when you're binge watching home and design. Uh, these actually, these trays were built from uh, the drafting boards we made back at design school. We would take these uh, boards from the art store and we had to laminate them with something like a cutting mat that provided just the right 
sketching surface. And in the end, mine was damaged and I ripped it in half and added these borders to it. And it keeps your Lego parts from spilling off the table or allows you to have it in your lap uh, when you're somewhere like the couch. So I'm gonna use this to build our set today. There's a couple of features of having this carpet inlaid in the tray and those are as follows. When you've got small parts on the surface here, having carpet allows you to depress the tips of your fingers in and easily pick up the smallest uh, Lego parts that can be sometimes challenging to pick up off the hard surface when the part is smaller than the triangular negative space that's between the radii of two adult fingers. So depressing your hands into the carpet is one of the primary features of the tray and why I built it this way. The other one is that when you've got a handful of small bits laid out on a hard surface, they all interlock and when you go to scoop them up, you just keep pushing them out of the way, kind of like the interlaced uh, shade balls in a, on the surface of a reservoir and your Legos can be very hard to scoop up off a hard surface because they're interlocked and all down at the flattest level. When you've got parts laid out on carpet and you go to scoop them up, the Legos leading edge will get caught in the carpet and they start tumbling and as they jumble together, it allows you to scoop up the Legos really effectively. So I enjoyed, of course, playing on the floor of my bedroom as a little kid. And I think that's where I learned all the benefits of playing on the carpet. And uh, so now we've got a little piece of that up here on the tabletop like an adult. But let's get started on our Lunar Lander build. Now, I've taken our, our parts out of the box because I wanted to get the decals on and not get bogged down in that. But as we bring them out onto the table, we face the age old question, to null or not to null? Uh, I'm a huge proponent of nulling and new interns here at Home and Design watch the Tom Sachs 10 Bullets series um, to learn the ABKs of good studio practice. But when I'm playing with such a small kit, something I'm gonna do in one sitting, um, I don't necessarily null my parts uh, if I'm working on a humongous set that's going to take multiple days to build, or if I'm so interested in a set's new parts that I want to dig into everything, uh, I'll, I'll lay everything out. In fact, I'll sometimes go a step further and I'll leave some construction equipment around uh, a build that's partially underway, and you can easily identify that it's literally under construction. Now, the technique that I prefer when I'm just dumping, that would typically be like bag one and bag two, and within it, we'd find some smaller baggies with these smaller parts. Uh, especially when I'm not in a tray like this, the one technique I like to use is to create a rim of my larger parts so they're not gonna obscure my smaller parts, but then just to dump my small parts into the center where they'll be corralled by the larger parts and not roll off the table. So looks like we're ready to go here. Now this set has around a thousand parts and a lot of repetitive steps. So I figure at three to five seconds per part it should just take between an hour or two to put this together, uh, save for the sharing of a few thoughts along the way. 11 Houston, you are go at five minutes. Roger, follow 11. Houston, we're standing by over. 
respiro. Yeah, this thing is gorgeous. This thing's gorgeous. And sure enough, these little guys, what uh, they are the thrust, the reaction control system uh, plume obstructors. And sounds like I just made that up. But um, those are real. They were actually a little bigger on the um, descent stage there. But there's not a Lego part I can imagine doing that job better. So that's pretty cool. And sure enough, we've got our ascent module psh, ready to take off and return back to the command module. We've got an engine in there and we've got our asymmetrical structure here. And behind each one of these fairings were the fuel tank and oxidizer. Um, and there was a bigger fuel tank on this side, a smaller oxidizer tank on this side. and exactly how it ought to be. So the hatch faces the ladder and we've got these awesome triangular windows, probably one of the better interpretations of that we've seen in Lego. Although this illustrated set of windows is pretty fantastic. Now we can kind of see these things working together. In fact, let's bring them all together. We need a ladder for this guy. We need something. Should maybe have one black leg or something to a gray leg as a indicator. Those are looking pretty good. Tell you what, one of the last things I want to try, I appreciate how much gold there is on this kit, but I'm a fan of Lego's old, old chrome gold versus the new metallic gold. And I'd like to see what our chrome visors look here. Look here. All right, Neil. Here we are. We can see Earth reflected in your visor. Looking good. Man. A friend of mine contacted me the night of the launch. And her son had been out at the launch and had shied away from a couple opportunities to step up and play flight director while we launched our sounding rockets that morning. Well, later that night, after lights out, she heard a noise coming from her son's room. And through the bedroom door, she could hear him counting down from 10, nine, nine eight, eight, seven, eight, seven, seven, six, five, five, four, four, 
space is there. And the moon and the planets are there. And new hopes for knowledge and peace are there. And therefore, as we set sail, we ask God's blessing on the most hazardous and dangerous and greatest adventure on which man has ever embarked.